What's up, guys? I figured I'd do my soapbox because I'm probably not gonna, if I do go live this weekend in Orlando, it will be because I'm at Europa showing off all these awesome people that are coming to see us and, you know, having a grand old time, right? But you guys know that I'm like a realist and I like to share my realistic life with you guys and like real life scenarios with you guys because it's nice to hear people be real, you know? So I have to start this off. Hi, boo-boo. Hi, Mrs. Andela. Um, so I have to share this with you. Okay. So obviously those of you that know who I am and you guys know my background, I do have endometriosis. I brought that up before. And I will tell you that like today <laughs> has been absolutely horrible. Okay. I'm going to, Oh, you guys made it. Art, right, What's up? Um, today has been absolutely horrible. I know that like, you know, we always, I always get on here and I'm like, hee ha ha ha, everything's awesome. But it's like, it's sometimes good to hear, you know, the good with the bad because not every day is freaking good. Okay. Let's be real. Not every day is good. It's, it's, that's the, like the honest to God truth. Right. So I wanted to make this particular soapbox of mine. I wanted to make sure that like, I kind of put a little bit more information out there for these females. And it's not just for females, it's for guys too, but a lot for the females, okay? So, today was bad for the simple fact that I got a phone call on my phone, even if I was in the office, on my phone from the office. <laughs> I don't know why this was like this today, but literally every seven to 10 minutes, there was a problem. It, was, it could have been like a super minute problem or it could have been like a really, really sticky, stupid mistake problem. And everybody makes mistakes. I don't, you know, I don't, think anybody's going to be perfect by any means, but for every seven minutes, mm. but here was the, you know, here's the thing though, is that, you know, if you're sick at your job, right? Say you, you call in, right? You don't feel good. You call in and it is what it is. You're sick. You're not going in. Sorry. Can't make it today. Me. I can't call in. There is nobody to do my job. So I don't have a choice. So here's the deal. This is what happened. So Two nights ago, and I think this is just a flare up because of all the stress I have. What's up, Justin? What up, Jess? I think it's a flare up if I had to like pinpoint it. And whenever I get super, super, super stressed out, it's like everything in my little abdominal region gets super, super tight. Rebecca, what's up, girl? I definitely want you to listen to this one. So it gets super, super tight in my abdominal region. And I feel like obviously my cortisol levels go up, inflammation in the body goes up, yada, yada, yada. So two days ago, I'm in bed, 4 a.m. rolls around. Literally, guys, when I tell you that at four o'clock in the morning, I woke up with the most excruciating pain, like with the cramps, it just like, and when I say out of a dead sleep, like out of a dead sleep, like I am in a trans five sleep and boom, out of nowhere, 4 a.m., I'm up, I can't move. I'm like, oh my God, I'm staring at John, looks so adorable sleeping and I'm like, ah! <laughs> So anyways, I was up for like two hours. I didn't sleep well then. I've been like in a lot of pain. And you know, when you're in a lot of pain, you don't feel good. I mean, either way you look at it, there's a couple things about me. Number one, I do not like to complain, okay? So I normally don't complain. Sheree, I love you, my sis. Um, you encouraged me to do this video tonight, by the way. Um, so anyways, I don't like to complain. Number two, I push through what I gotta do. Number three, I don't like people to have sympathy for me. I don't want empathy either. Like I don't want a pity party on Charisse because I don't feel good or whatever. I don't want people like, I, I don't know. I'm weird like that. Eh, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So hi, Jeff. I love you too. Um, so anyways, here's the deal with this like endometriosis thing. So my last surgery was probably about a year and a half ago. And I've had to have surgery for my endometriosis every single like every two years is when it's gotten like to that point where i've had to have the surgery right so i've decided that i'm just not going to do the surgery anymore the reason why i'm not going to do the surgery anymore and i'll tell you why is because i'm back in the same situation two years later young yes it does buy me two years but unfortunately it only buys me two years now why i have not done a full hysterectomy because i'm only 33 years old and what if i decide in a midlife crisis not to say midlife is going to be 35 but let's say in two years i want to have a kid then it's all gone i can't do it and that i just i want to be able to have my options open 
So here's the messed up part about the whole situation, okay? So I told you guys I'm on estrogen blockers. That blocks the estrogen, which also fuels the endometriosis. But when I went to the doctor, and this was like a year ago, I have naturally high testosterone levels, okay? Now, that puts me in a very bad predicament. And the reason why it puts me in a bad predicament is because those high testosterone levels, for whatever reason, they, you know, I, I mean, they're pretty high. And I don't take anything. If I did, I'd probably be like way off the chain. You guys think I'm off the chain now? I'd be like super off the chain. So anyways, I have super high testosterone levels and those lead to obviously not just the conversion from testosterone to estrogen, but it also leads to ovarian cysts and all these other painful things like PCOS. Yes, Angela, yes, I have PCOS, endometriosis, adenomyosis, IBS, and interstitial cystitis. They come like wrapped up in a nice little bow package and it's so much fun. So, so much fun. So anyways, <laughs> with that being said, the doctor tells me, this is like one of the top surgeons in Florida. Obviously, I want to go to the best surgeon in Florida. So he tells me like, so listen, this is your options. You can either go on about your life and you can be like in bed for three or four days, possibly even more, and you know, have to walk around with the damn heating pad and suck it up. Or we're going to put you on some spirulactone and it's going to lower your testosterone levels. But you may not have so many ovarian cysts pop up. Now, let me ask you a question. You're in my position, right? You got to get up. You got to go to work. Nobody's going to do your shit for you, right? You got to do what you got to do. You have to be motivated. You have to be driven. You have to have energy. And you always have to be on top of your shit. Now, if I crash my testosterone levels... I am not going to be on top of my shit. It's not going to happen. Like, that's not reality. So I had to pick and choose, which is, I'm being honest with you guys. I had to pick and choose. What do I really want? Okay. Am I going to work really hard and be really good at my job and, you know, get up out of bed and rock it every day and be in pain for 85% of the month or lower my testosterone levels, take an, like possibly take a dive, which is probably going to happen. I mean, listen, low testosterone is an epidemic. I'm blessed that I actually have good testosterone levels naturally. So I have to pick and choose. Oh, I picked and choose the route of not taking anything to lower my levels, which therefore kind of leaves me in this situation. So, I mean, it sucks, but I mean, it is what it is, you know, and I want to share this with you guys because at the end of the day, I mean, obviously anything, anything could be worse, right? I mean, it could always be worse in any situation you guys are in out there. I don't care how bad your day has been, guys. It can always be worse. So don't ever think it can't be worse because it can. So even if I had the worst day ever, which I say today was like the worst day ever, it can always be worse. So I always think about that. Okay. I woke up. I'm, I'm like, at least got out of bed. I've got this. And I think it's more of like a mental thing that I'm trying to like mentally mind myself to just push, 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 get it done, get it done, get it done. It is a catch 22. Um, and what's up, Miss Denise? Yes, enemy trios is nine years. Ugh, girl, I'm telling you, it is serious. So here's the deal, and this sucks too. Like I'm telling you, this is like real life shit. So we have Europa this weekend, right? And of course I am like exhausted. I still have an extremely long couple days ahead of me because I have to pack all my shit tonight, do laundry. I've got to go and to Orlando tomorrow and make sure everything's set up. I have a great team, by the way. Thank goodness. Um, but I, I have a long couple days ahead of me. And here's the other thing. So, of course, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys because I tell my friends this kind of stuff. I'm going to tell you guys because I am a very real person and I'm just going to just throw it out there, right? So me and John own an HRT center. We own a weight loss center, right? So it's only expected that you look your best and feel your best at all times, no matter what. You're like not allowed to look bad because you're the owner of the clinic. I mean, how could you look bad because you own an HRT center, right? <laughs> so, you know, I guess there's a certain part of me that obviously I'm going through this little inflammation period and a little flare-up period and I'm bloated, I'm retaining water, I feel bad, I'm tired. I'm like, look, my midsection looks like total garbage right now. And I am just, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to go in front of all these people. Europa, I'm like, am I just being vain? Or like, what's my deal? So 
I guess that's kind of where I'm like mm, trying to like turn the wheels a little bit to like turn it around and be like, all right, listen, I'm justifying why I feel this way and I'm going to accept it. The fact that I'm going to get up out of bed, I'm going to go do what I got to do and I'm still going to rock it this weekend at Europa no matter what. And I'm still going to look good no matter what. doesn't matter. I'll still look good, right? Because I'll be smiling. <laughs> Anyways, so I had to share this with you guys because... You know, some people don't know like about the struggles of going through. I mean, this is apparently this is like a big epidemic. You know, when I was 16 years old, endometriosis was like unheard of. It just I mean, it was just one of those things where it's like you just have really bad cramps. Get over it and stop being a baby. Mm. So they go in for the surgery and they're like, oh, damn, you got scar tissue on your bladder, your ovaries, your fallopian tubes everywhere. That's probably why you are in like excruciating pain. So it's a little, yeah, Denise, we can totally talk, girl. I mean, seriously, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm super lucky to have John, my husband. He's very understanding about my situation. And sometimes it's hard to have, you know, a relationship and your husband or your significant other not be understanding about you being in excruciating pain, you know, especially when you don't talk about it all day. I don't sit around and complain all day about me being in pain. I'm like, boo hoo hoo. I'm not going to cry about it. You know, I mean, what's, what's anybody going to do about it? Are you going to fix it with like a magical wand and be like, poof, everything's gone. No, that's not what's going to happen. So you got to suck it up, be a soldier, get over it. What's that boo? I was just talking about you. All right. You guys always have my back. I love you guys. And, you know, I definitely have a badass team at the office. Um, I will say, you girls at the office today, I'm probably going to tag every single one of you guys on this, okay? You guys drove me crazy today. Every single one of you. There's not one of you guys that did not drive me crazy today, okay? So I'm giving all of you guys the crazy stick, okay? Getting a little bit of love there. So anyways, I did want to share this with you guys. I'm super excited about Europa this weekend. But I just wish I could feel a little bit better, like this much better. Just that much, a little bit, okay? I mean, I would love to get some sleep. That would be amazing. I'd be so excited just to get a little bit of sleep. And um, yeah, you gotta suck it up exactly, girl. See, see, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, you guys, if, if I don't tell you guys what's going on, it's just one of those things where you're like, oh my goodness, I, I've heard this too, and this is why I'm doing the video. So like, <laughs> one of those things where it's like, oh my God, she's got the best life ever. She just runs around and she has a good old time and she goes to work and she gets to go out on the weekends and hang out and do this, whatever. And just, I, I, I mean, it portrays, I guess, that everything's perfect all the time. But we preach that health is number one, right? So, I mean, I do take care of my health as far as, you know, taking care of my hormones and stuff. But this is something I have zero control over. So it kind of sucks because I, I can't, if I can go in there and scope it and scrape it and get it out, I would do it, but I can't. And I'm in a position at this point where I made a deciding factor that I'm not gonna do another surgery right this very second. Because to me, the options of weighing, of being in bed for two weeks and feeling like I'm totally handicapped, which is the worst feeling, especially for an alpha chick like me. I do not like feeling like I can't do my own things. Like even John, he is my Greek, like God, but I'm telling you, like I do not like not feeling that I can't do my own shit. Like I like to hold my own bags. I mean, I love when you hold my bags, don't get me wrong, especially at the airport, that's awesome. But you know, I like to do things for myself. I don't want people to do things for me. I guess I'm just weird like that, but that's me. What's up, Michelle? I was just talking about my endo um, and then, you know, a little bit of hormones that go with it. So anyways, uh, with the endometriosis comes, you know, some other things. You get the water retention, the bloating. Obviously, I'm in pain, right? Okay. This is with the hormones being under control, okay? This is just, you get spikes in it and there's nothing you can do about it. There's just nothing you can do about it. You got to suck it up because... You can't do anything about it but take like a warm Epsom salt bath, which I don't even feel like I want to get into because I'm so tired. <laughs> or just sit there with a heating pad and take some naproxen. That's what it is. <laughs> so, you know, I also, I mean, you can get breast tenderness, which I've had. You know, I've also had high prolactin levels and the high prolactin levels were due to the estrogen levels being so high. And then that turned into high prolactin levels. And then the high prolactin levels turned into breast tenderness and nausea and not feeling good. It's like a triple ripple effect. So it's so important, guys, because I, I'm not going to name the person on this feed, but there is actually, there's one, two, three, 
There's three people on this feed right now that recently has, they've told me that they've checked their blood work and their estrogen levels come back high. So obviously this is an epidemic, okay? It's a big thing. And I think that back in the day when people go to their OBGYN doctors and regular PCPs or whatever it is, and they get their hormones checked, females are supposed to have estrogen, obviously. But you're not supposed to have like this abundance of estrogen. It's not good for you. It leads to cancer, ovarian cancer. It leads to cervical cancer. It leads to breast cancer. I'll be honest with you. So I have that little kit upstairs. It's a little swab kit because everybody on my mom's side has breast cancer and everybody on my dad's side also has breast cancer, except for my mom. Thank goodness, knock on wood. Now, I am supposed to swab my mouth for the second time and send this swab in, but it's one of those things where I'm like putting it on the back burner because I'm like, Ugh. I guess there's a certain part of me, I guess I do wanna know, but I don't wanna know, you know? Cause I'm in a position, it's like, oh goodness, what if it comes back and it's, you know, I really do have an issue, then I have to address it and I don't have time to address it. <laughs> I'll be totally honest with you. So it's, it's you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tug of war battle guys, you know? And I don't think that, that a lot of females talk about this kind of stuff. And I feel like it's really important to get this information out there because I think some of these females, they do, uh, ladies out there, I'll share this in my lady groups, okay? But I think that some of these females do get some of these issues and they just don't know and they think it's, they just think it's normal, you know? They think it's normal to bleed all month or they think it's normal to, you know, cry because one of your socks doesn't fit right. You guys think I'm kidding when I say that. I'm so not kidding. I mean, before I got, I am telling you, that estrogen blocker, when I started that estrogen blocker four years ago, that estrogen blocker changed my life. It didn't just help me with my memory, my focus, my energy, the way I look and my emotional status because John literally, I'm pretty sure he thought I was psycho. I would literally cry over you know, I would put on my socks and one sock would be a little tighter than the other. And I'm like, these socks just don't fit. And they, they're just, I don't know. I just, this is horrible. And you look at me like, is something wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm telling you, it's these socks. <laughs> so, I mean, you guys should share this. You guys should share it because it's important. Just check it. Please check it. It's not normal to be in pain every single day of your life. And check your estrogen levels and make sure your hormones are in check. It's important, you know, and if you do indeed, or you happen to be in a very similar situation, I would like to send you some positive vibes, okay, and some empowerment to get up, go about your day, do what you got to do, push through it. You can do it. I promise you can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And I got a lot on my plate, mind you, a whole lot on my plate, okay, not just a business and a child and a husband and all the other children at my office. <laughs> but we we have a lot on our plate and we're busy and boom, 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 bam. You know, it's go, 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 go. There is no stopping. Go, 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 go. No matter what, don't stop. Just keep going. Just finish the job. Go, go, go. Just do it, do it, do it. Just gotta do it, okay? So I wanna give you guys some empowerment to do what you gotta do. Get up, do what you gotta do. Roll out of bed, mind over matter. And most of the time it does work. So be a soldier. And I had to share this with you guys. Yes, I do own Titan Medical Center, me and my husband, John Sikoris. And yes, we can help you. And yes, we can send you in for nationwide blood testing. But either way you look at it, I want you guys to at least get your hormones checked because it's so important. Like I cannot explain to you. I don't care if you're 18 or if you're 19, 25, 32, we don't treat anyone under 21. Let me just make sure I say that. I said 18 or 19 because I had hormonal issues at 16. So I don't want to leave those people out. But you can be 40, you can be 50. You just get it checked because you might catch something early on or you might just think, a lot of people, this is the messed up thing. A lot of people think that it's normal. Like this is just normal. I guess I'm just going to feel like this. I feel like garbage and I feel like shit. It's just how I'm going to feel. I'm getting older and that's how I feel. It's supposed to be like that, right? No, it's not. It's not supposed to be like that. You can definitely be preventative about what you're doing and preventative about your health. You're, you have a lot of things at your fingertips that you really don't realize that you have. And it's just about being educated and being able to have the right people guide you. So I did want to share this with you guys. Any of you guys out there that want any advice, I'll be more than happy to help. 
this weekend's a long weekend for me. So if you happen to inbox me and I don't inbox you back, it's because I am working an 18 hour shift for the next three days. Anyways, guys, I'm glad you guys tuned in. Love you guys a lot. And please, 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 if you guys need anything, please let me know. And I'm sending my love, Angela. I wish next year you can come to Europa and come rock it with us. I think it'll be a great time. Tell Casey I said hi. And uh, what's up, Pat? And I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Mwah.